Thank you. It's an honor for me to be part of the Kiev Jewish Forum. I want to send a special greeting to my friends, President Zelensky, President Herzl, all of the distinguished participants in the panel discussions that will follow. While this forum celebrates 30 years of diplomatic relations between Ukraine and the Jewish State of Israel, and that is certainly something to celebrate, this comes at a critical time for the Jewish people and the Jewish community of Ukraine in particular. Anti-Semitism is dramatically on the rise across the globe. The COVID epidemic has brought out the same blood libels first seen in the Middle Ages. The BDS movement seeks to delegitimize the Jewish state of Israel and its lies are gaining traction, especially on the internet and on college campus everywhere. Places that were once respected centers of free thought and learning, colleges and universities, are now some of the least thoughtful places on earth. I never thought I would see this any time in my lifetime. But today, it's not safe for Jewish boys to walk down some streets of Paris, London, and even New York wearing a yarmulke. Those are just some of the challenges facing Jewish communities around the world in 2021. At the same time, I realize that Ukraine faces its own serious challenges, and this cannot be overlooked. The entire world is watching your borders right now, and we are hoping for a just solution without harm to anyone. I've always enjoyed my visit to your beautiful country, and I look forward to my return when the world opens up again. But it would be dishonest to say that relations between Jews and Ukrainians have always been perfect. They have not. Jews have been part of Ukraine for over a thousand years. Some of our greatest rabbis and yeshivas were located here. Jewish life was part of Ukraine. That can never be denied. It is also in Ukraine that we have witnessed some of the greatest tragedies just two months ago, we passed the 80th anniversary of the massacre at Babi Yar in the long list of terror that engulfed the Jewish people in the Second World War. There are some moments that stand out. Babi Yar is one of them. The unbelievability of those two days must serve as a reminder to the entire world that anti-Semitism, even in its most benign form, can lead to atrocities like Babi Yar. I've always wondered concerning the one and a half million Jewish children that were murdered in the Holocaust, how many cures for disease and advancements in science and medicine were lost? How many symphonies and books were not written? How many ways would those lost souls have made the world a better place? That was a tragedy, not just for Jews, but for the entire world. That is why it's absolutely vital that today when you hear something that is anti-Jewish, when you see something, say something, and don't be fooled. There is no difference between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. Hatred of Israel is just a hiding place for those who hate Jews. Never let anti-Semitism, anti-Israeli lies pass without a word. Anti-Semites are cowards, and they back down when they're confronted. That is why I believe that they must always be stopped, and that is exactly what the World Jewish Congress does every single day. We confront anti-Jewish lies. We are laser-focused on fighting all forms of anti-Semitism. We are supporting pro-Israel and pro-Jewish activists on campus. We are training our next generation of leaders with our Jewish diplomatic program. We are focusing on Jewish education for all young Jews. We are working with Jewish communities in 100 countries, and this includes the wonderful and strong Jewish community of Ukraine, led by Boris Loshkin. And you must do this as well in Ukraine. We will help you. Jewish students should, should be organized in Ukraine I want to know how many Jewish schools there are in Ukraine, how many Jewish students, 
and that every young Jewish person who wants a Jewish education should get one. This is how we will build a stronger Jewish community in Ukraine. I also want you to find the young leaders in your community and train them. Any anti-Semitism in Ukraine must be fought, whether it's in the media, on the internet, on campuses, or on the street. And you must attack it with strength and resolve. A strong Jewish community, unwilling to be victims again, is the only way that we will defeat this new wave of anti-Semitism. Remember, we are not the ghetto Jews of old. That chapter is behind us. And we will never, ever go back there again. I am an optimist by nature, in spite of the challenges to the Jewish people that I've outlined. I believe we are stronger than we have ever been before. Today, we won't allow the indifference that the world showed the Jews in the 1930s. Today, we go directly to the leaders of the countries everywhere when there are acts against Jews. I have personally been to 40 countries, meeting with presidents and prime ministers. Now, we have a strong Jewish state of Israel, something that we could only dream about before 1948. After 2,000 years in exile, the Jewish people have finally have come home the establishment of the state of Israel is one of the great miracles of our time. We must never forget this or take it for granted. The Jewish people will survive. We have defied all the odds for thousands of years. And trust me on this, we aren't going anywhere. Let us work together as one people, one united people. That is the only way we will defeat this new wave of anti-Semitism. And that is what we will go forward today. I thank you for this important conference. I thank you for your participation. And I thank you for caring about our people. God bless you all. And may God continue to watch over the Jewish people in Ukraine, in Israel, and throughout the world. Thank you. I'm Israel Kai.